All right, guys, a little NFL football to get into it. I want to get into this game real quick. So let me look up the NFL schedule because I don't know. Guys, I don't know every single team that's playing today right now. All right, so here. I want to jump into this Lions-Rams game, guys. First. Lions are going to get their asses kicked, guys. This team is going to lose. I I'm telling you guys. This team is going to be on the verge of losing every football game. They're not going to win a game, guys. In my personal opinion, the Lions are not going to win a football game. I'll say this. They play the Rams this week. Then they're at the Eagles next week. Week 9, they're on a bye. Are they beating the Steelers? Hell no. You would literally have to hope that the Steelers' defense is just gone. But on the offensive side of the football, I mean... Maybe the, the Lions defense can make something happen in Week 10, but probably not. The Steelers defense would have to just disappear. I don't see them winning that. So, that's a loss. I mean, the Rams. You're losing that game. You're, Matthew Stafford, guys, hear me out. He'll have 340 passing yards, five touchdowns. He'll have four or five. He's going to have four or five touchdowns today. 340 passing yards. And they'll put up 40 points. It's going to be a blowout. It's going to be an absolute blowout. But back to the schedule. So, who are they beating? Who are the Lions beating? Their best chance. So, they have the Rams this week, Eagles next week. Then they're on a the bye in week nine. You might as well consider that a win because they're not playing anyone. Week 10, Steelers. Like I said, their defense would have to disappear. They're not beating the Steelers. In week 10. Then you play the Browns. I mean, it's not possible. Their defense is good. Baker, I mean, who knows if he's coming back. Ch I mean, Chubb, who knows. But Johnson, the running back, has been pretty good his first week. So we'll see. Bears in week 12. I mean, who knows who's going to start between Fields and Dalton, but... I assume it's going to be Fields, and the Bears' defense is no joke, so that's a loss. Vikings Week 13, that's a loss. I mean, it was close, but no no Dalvin Cook, and Jefferson burned us. Their best chance, guys, in my personal opinion, is against the Broncos in Week 14 and the Falcons in Week 16. Those are the only two games where I'm like, you know what, I could see us winning that. But the Lions, are, it's typical. It's very, very typical. They're not going to win, guys. I would be shocked if they win a game. But let's go. Let's get into the other games here. So here is who I'm taking for every single game today. We're going to start with Washington and Green Bay. Give me the Packers today. And I'll, I'll go Packers plus seven today. I mean, if you guys really want me to get into that. Panthers, Giants, give me the Panthers. Then Ravens, Bengals, give me the Ravens. Chiefs, Titans, give me the Chiefs. I think Patrick Mahomes has a good game, steps it up. A lot of people have been doubting him. And I think the defense will have a pretty good day. Not great, but pretty good. In, in terms of the passing game, I, I think they'll be good. In terms of the running game, there's, there's really no stopping Derrick Henry. So... Keyword is passing game. Jets, Patriots, I'm taking the Pats. And then we move on to the Falcons-Dolphins game. This one's a toss-up, guys, because it could go either way. Hmm. I'm going to take the Falcons here, guys, strictly because I don't know if Tua is 100%. Kind of was banged up last week. He had that, like, I don't know, like, that armor play. <laughs> so, who knows if he's 100%. But I'm taking the Falcons. All right. Eagles, Raiders. I'm going to take the Raiders over the Eagles. It might be a shock to some of you guys. Actually, no, hold on. I'm going to flip this. Hmm. 
Because there's no Darren Waller, but, ah, uh, man. This might shock you guys. I'm going to take the Eagles. I'm going to take the Eagles here. 100%. Already, you guys already know where I'm going with the Lions and Rams game. I don't even need to talk to you guys about that. Cardinals over the, over the Texans, and then the Buccaneers over the Bears. And then the Monday Night Football game, I am taking the Saints over the Seahawks. So, that is that for NFL. All right, guys. I want to talk now about the Dodgers and Braves series. And I'll say this to you guys. To all the Dodgers fans out there, please just be quiet. Please. Now, I understand there was a lot of injuries. I get that. But there might have been a different outcome. Okay. I get that as well. With Muncy. With Justin Turner. I get that. With Scherzer. Whatever. Kershaw. The fact of the matter is there wasn't a different outcome. You had injuries. Guys, give it up. The Braves are in the World Series. The Astros are in the World Series, which is annoying. Just give it up. Season's over. And the thing with the Dodgers is they're going to be good next year. But there's a lot of guys that they're going to lose. I'll say this to you guys. Max Scherzer, I feel like he's definitely coming back. Kershaw, I don't see him going anywhere. I really don't. I think he stays with L.A. He finishes his career as a Dodger. Seager can go either way. Does he really want to test the shortstop market? Or does he want to be a Dodger for life? I think in terms of Trey Turner's value, and if they want, I mean, it just doesn't make sense because Trey Turner looked really uncomfortable at second base. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if they keep Corey Seager, but I don't see it happening, guys. I could see him going to possibly the Yankees or somebody like that. I'll have predictions um, during the offseason, but... We'll see. But anyways, guys, let's get into the game. Remember how I said a certain someone should sign with with the Tigers this offseason? Or it was last offseason. But you remember that guy? That guy was Eddie freaking Rosario. And that was probably my best call ever in sports. Now, guys, here's the thing. I'm not always going to be right when it comes to sports opinions. I might have some good calls or good takes, but I have some bad takes as well, and I'll admit when I'm wrong, but Eddie Rosario, man, just my God, he's been great. And I literally, like, I would love to see the Braves keep him, but who knows what's going to happen. I could see a team like the Angels going in and say, hey, we need a hitter to help Trout. Who knows? But anyways, let's get into the game. Austin Riley... In the bottom of the first, hits a ground rule double. Ozzy Albi scores, puts the Braves up by one. Then we go to the top of the fourth. Here come the Dodgers. Cody Bellinger with a single on the ground ball to left field. Trey Turner scores, ties the game up at one. Going to the bottom of the fourth now. Freaking Eddie Rosario. Hits a homer. Trev Starno scores. It's basically a free run shot, excuse me. Braves go up 4-1, and then this is when I caught, was starting to get nervous when they brought in Luke Jackson. I was like, oh, God, this isn't looking good. Top of the seventh, we go. A.J. Plock doubles on the line drive to Rosario. Chris Taylor scores. Bellinger at the third. Braves still lead 4-2. And then Tyler Matzik was dominant yesterday, guys. And that is pretty much the end of the ball game. Braves win the series. They go on to the World Series to face the Braves. No, to, excuse me, to face the Cardinals. Oh, my God. Not the Cardinals. Oh, my God. The Astros. Excuse me, guys. Jeez, I'm drawing a blank. I'm literally looking at the NFL, and the first team I see is the Cardinals. 
Jesus, Gif, get it together. My God. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, anyway. Sorry for that brain fart. Excuse me. But here's my keys to the postseason for the Braves and for the Astros. I'll start with the Braves. You have to find a way to stop Al Jordan Alvarez. He has been insane this postseason. He's been good. If you can stop Alvarez and Carlos Correa, you're pretty much set up for success. Game one started for the Braves, no other than Charlie Morton kind of saw that coming. For the Astros, they haven't revealed their starters, their starter. So we'll see what happens. But the key for the Astros, guys, is you gotta find a way to stop Eddie Rosario and Ozzy Albies. That's what I see it being. But the question mark for the Astros is Lance McCullers coming back. Because if not, guys, I see that as a loss. I see, that's a huge loss for the Astros. But somehow, some way, they're in the World Series. Without Lance McCullers, they made it. And the reason why is their offense. Their offense is insane. Their hitting is good. But anyways, guys, I apologize for that brain fart. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, and thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a good rest of your NFL.